Hey everybody, Johnny Bowden here. You know, I'm making this video about the coronavirus situation at the end of March. And what I'm starting to notice already is a kind of disturbing tendency to politicize our reactions to this. Uh, some of us think we're making too much of a big deal over it. And others think we're not taking this seriously enough and it's becoming another area that's dividing us so that it becomes almost a political position how scared you are and how much preparation you're taking. I do not even want to venture into that particular minefield. What I think we can all agree on, no matter where we are on the spectrum of fear and preparation, we can all agree that we all feel more anxiety and stress now today than we did a couple of months ago before this all hit. So if you were a low stress person a couple of months ago, you're probably a little higher today. And if you were already a kind of nervous, high stress, anxiety kind of person, you're probably going through the roof today because these circumstances demanded and they created. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Because while we're doing all we can to protect our bodies, from the possible dangers of this virus. We need to also pay attention to what our reaction is doing to our souls. These are circumstances in which it's making it even easier to disconnect than it already was with social media and with digital devices. And we need to be cognizant of what that is doing to our psyches, our souls, because statistically, Realistically, probably the coronavirus will not kill you. But stress and anxiety, unmitigated chronic stress and anxiety will. Or if they won't kill you directly, they will contribute to your demise in a multitude of ways. So what I'm asking is that we be cognizant of the disruptions that this is having on our social life. And that we make every effort to pay attention to that to manage that stress and to find ways to continue to connect and to be who we really are and to maintain those things that matter to us and to do all we can so that when we come out of this, we will be whole and complete people because how we go through this is going to determine the kind of people we are when we come out of this. There are a lot of things about this situation that feed into some of the worst tendencies in American life. Polarization, us against them, the enemy is out there. We need to come together in this time. And the way to do something like that, there's no one perfect way to find our way out of the stress and anxiety in this situation. But the one universal here is that we have to find the opportunity in this challenge. It's a challenge. It's one that we didn't expect, but challenges come down the pike all the time. Every one of you has experienced them in your personal life. And yes, this is a bigger one because we all feel it together, but we have to have the resources and build those resources alone and together so that we will come out of this. Okay. And I know, I just know in my heart and soul, this will be behind us one day, but how we act right now, how we connect, how we support each other, how we reach out and how we calm ourselves and care for ourselves right now is going to have probably a bigger impact on the rest of our lives than the coronavirus ultimately will. So find the opportunity and the challenge. It exists. It's there. I saw it in 9-11. I saw it in the HIV uh, outbreak. There are opportunities. Find them. Look for them. This is not the time to abandon your diet and abandon your meditation and abandon your routines. It's a time to find other ways to center yourself and take care of yourself in a way that you will survive this, not just your lungs and your upper respiratory tract, but your whole being. And that's what I care about. And that's what I don't want you to lose sight of. Mm -hmm.